Good evening and please be seated. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the installation of the Phi Beta Kappa Society's Gamma Chapter of Rhode Island at Providence College. Today we will receive our charter establishing the new chapter and induct our inaugural class of students as well as foundation members. It is my privilege to open the ceremony of installation. My name is Joan Branham, Associate Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, Professor of Art History, and President of the Gamma Chapter of Rhode Island. I want to thank my faculty and staff colleagues, trustees, parents, guests, alumni, friends, and inductees for joining us today as we mark a momentous event in the life and history of Providence College. In particular, I warmly welcome Frederick Lawrence, Secretary of the Phi Beta Kappa Society, and Dr. Peter Quimby, who is President of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. I also wish to recognize several Providence College leaders with us today, the President of Providence College, Father Kenneth Sicard, Executive Vice President of PC and Manchester Moloch, members of the Cabinet, Chief Academic Officer and Provost, Dr. Sean Reed, Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Sheila Adamus Leota, and President of the Faculty Senate, Dr. Bob Berry. I also welcome the Phi Beta Kappa faculty and staff, foundation members, and the chapter's student inductees. As is the tradition here at Providence College, we begin with an invocation, and I'd like to ask Father Mark Knoll, assistant to the provost and Phi Beta Kappa member, to the podium. Provident God, you who make all things new, we ask your blessings on this new venture as we inaugurate a new chapter of Phi Beta Kappa here at Providence College. You who are continually creating, renewing, and guiding our efforts to teach and learn about the worlds you have created. We know that all good things come from you and we humbly recognize that the gifts with which you have so generously endowed us, our fascination with the arts, our curiosity about the complexities of our societies, our fascination with the sciences, and the eagerness to learn and to keep learning, we who are teachers as well as we who are students are given to us through your divine generosity. For all of this, we bless and thank you. We ask your blessings, gracious Lord, on this evening of celebration and dedication and for your continued guidance as we lifelong learners that we are seek to know you better through your creation. As we seek new ways to put our mas mastery of the secrets of the universe at the service of our brothers and sisters, your beloved children, according to our Dominican ideals of learning and sharing. We ask your blessing upon these young people, these men and women whom we induct into our new chapter of Phi Beta Kappa today, as we recognize and honor them for their achievements. We celebrate their capacity for creativity, for critical thinking, for focused effort. We are grateful that they and their families have entrusted Providence College's faculty and staff to engage them intellectually, morally, and spiritually. We are grateful for their confidence to discover and explore new possibilities and knowledge to discern what is right and good, noble and just, here with us in the Friar family. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen.
as an art historian who studies theories of sacred space, I can't help but begin my remarks this evening by noting the beautiful architectural space that surrounds us. I want to thank our chaplain, Father Justin Bolger, for opening the chapel's doors to us today. When St. Dominic Chapel was being built, I interviewed the architects who noted that their inspiration was the 6th century Byzantine Church of San Vitale in Ravenna, which also is octagonal in structure with a lantern gallery above and stonework on the exterior. I actually have the pleasure of teaching San Vitale every semester in the Art History Survey course, and it's always rewarding when students discover the connection between a very tangible part of their own campus life here and an ancient art historical monument, which I will also say is worth 10 points on the exam. <laughs> but more than this, more than this being a well-designed architectural space, I think it's fitting that we hold the Phi Beta Kappa installation here for a couple of reasons. St. Dominic Chapel is named after the founder of the Dominican Order, an order that possesses a long history of teaching and scholasticism, a passion for the pursuit of truth, and a deep love of learning. Since the Middle Ages, Dominican philosophers have been leaders in the intellectual life. Yet there's more about this space. Exactly like the Byzantine structure of San Vitale, the exterior of St. Dominic chapter, Chapel is minimal in its decoration, unpretentious, simple in its beauty. The architects of San Vitale also crafted an unadorned exterior that gives way to a beautiful, luminous, and artful interior. In fact, we read the ancient theologians and architects believe that liturgical structures should mirror meaning in our own lives. That is to say that superficial facades are not as important or worthy of attention as the cultivation, nurturing, and embellishment of the inner life, the life of the mind, spirit, and heart. In some ways, that describes an education in the liberal arts and sciences. The goal is not about producing superficial material appearances or even a flashy label to be printed on a resume after graduation. A liberal arts education creates a way of being in the world that students will take with them for a lifetime. It is a transformational training across the arts, humanities, natural and social sciences that only begins in college but continues for many years beyond. It prepares students to reflect deeply about complex matters, to consider and analyze all the evidence before coming to judgment, to think critically and fairly, to express oneself thoughtfully and with purpose, and to solve difficult problems in a very complicated world. In essence, a liberal arts education prepares students to become responsible, productive, and engaged global citizens. The word liberal in liberal arts is from the Latin liber, meaning free, unrestricted, such as our statue of liberté, a symbol of freedom that we all know today. A liberal arts education in antiquity meant subjects in the arts and sciences that were considered essential for a free person to know. Providence College has embraced this mission since its beginning in 1917, when Rhode Island granted Providence College its charter to promote virtue, piety, and learning in the liberal arts and sciences. PC's origins align directly with the values of Phi Beta Kappa. And the installation of a Phi Beta Kappa chapter tonight is a testament to the college's unwavering commitment to the arts and sciences, situating PC among the nation's most prestigious academic institutions. This recognition comes after a very long, intensive, and rigorous application process, with a Phi Beta Kappa site review committee 
coming to our campus and interviewing faculty, staff, students, and college leaders. I want to thank the entire community for uniting in this effort and recognize my friend and colleague, Dr. Uh, Sheila Adamus Leota, for her leadership and partnership on the application process, a labor of love that we have both shared. I'd also like to recognize Phi Beta Kappa mem member Melanie Sullivan of Institutional Research for her invaluable assistance on the application. And for tonight's organization, I thank the staff in Arts and Sciences and College Events for their incredible energies and assistance. Soon, we will hear about our foundation members who have given unparalleled service to the college's liberal arts mission. We also recognize our first class of Phi Beta Kappa students for their accomplishments. Every student here tonight has majored in the arts and sciences. Every student here has shown proficiency in a foreign language, an invaluable skill in our increasingly connected global setting. Every student has achieved academic excellence at the highest level of magna or summa cum laude. And every student here has demonstrated good character and integrity throughout their college career. Students, I began with a reference to some of the architectural details of this space. I conclude with the doors of this chapel as the threshold from which you will navigate your path ahead. As you step outside those doors tonight, I am confident that you will dedicate yourselves not to superficial distractions but to cultivating the inner self in order to work for the common good, to utilizing your critical and analytical skills to create justice and equity in society, and to fostering inquiry and curiosity to lead a lifelong love of learning. Congratulations and thank you. I now invite our distinguished guest, Frederick M. Lawrence, Secretary of the Phi Beta Kappa Society, to come to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Branham. President Sicard, thank you for your hospitality and for the warm welcome we have received here at Providence College. Father, you run a good show. <laughs> Honored guests, and none of these will be offended if I say most especially our new members of Phi Beta Kappa who shortly will be inducted as our newest members in this ancient and honorable society. It is my great, great pleasure to be with you today here at Providence College. You know, the Roots of Phi Beta Kappa go back nearly as long as those of the nation. We were founded on the cold winter night of December 5th, 1776, a little bit like this tonight and here in April, in the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, where five undergraduates gathered in the early days of the American Revolution. Today, we are part of a process that goes back nearly 250 years. The founders of our first chapter at William & Mary extended permission to begin new chapters to individuals at Yale in 1780 and then to Harvard in 1781. And it's a good thing they did because as you will hear in the official history that your chapter historian will give you tonight as part of the induction ceremony, it wasn't long after that that General Cornwallis, the British general, occupied Williamsburg, Virginia burned it to the ground, along with all the records of Phi Beta Kappa, and had they not transplanted to Yale and then Harvard, there would be no Phi Beta Kappa. It is no wonder that the motto of the state of Connecticut is, they who transplant sustain. So we transplanted to Harvard and Yale, and they to other schools, and that's pretty much how it went for the first century. In 1883, the then existing 25 chapters 
met together and formed the United Chapters of Phi Beta Kappa, the forerunner to today's Phi Beta Kappa society. Since 1883, representatives of each constituent group in the Phi Beta Kappa family have gathered every three years to select new chapters. These events, what we call our triennial councils, continued in person every three years until last year in 2021 when we couldn't meet in person. Fortunately, we did not break that tradition that goes back to 1883. We did meet remotely on Zoom, and thus the practice remains unbroken. For that, we are very grateful, and you in particular should be very grateful, because it was at that 2021 Triennial Council, meeting virtually last August, that we approved our 293rd chapter to be sheltered here at Providence College. As secretary and CEO, I have been granted authority by that triennial council of the Phi Beta Kappa Society to act on its behalf in overseeing the installation of your chapter, the Gamma of Rhode Island chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. You join the Phi Beta Kappa this family this cycle, along with Rollins College and the University of North Carolina in Charlotte. I had the great privilege of doing those installations. My colleague, Dr. Peter Quimby, who will join us in a moment, our board chair, was with me on those, and I think it is fair to say that this is a fitting conclusion of this cycle to gather here tonight in Providence. This is a happy and momentous occasion in the life of this institution and of this community. The installation of this chapter is the result of years of effort by many college faculty and staff who themselves are Phi Beta Kappa members and will be inducted tonight as the charter members of this chapter. But I think it is also fair to say it is a result of the devoted labor and accomplishment of all of the faculty, administration, staff, students, alumni, and supporters who have created here at Providence College a rigorous academic community with a deep commitment to excellence in the liberal arts that Phi Beta Kappa embodies and seeks to foster. We trust that the installation of this chapter fulfills the hopes imagined by all who have served this cause with commitment and inspiration. As I spent time on this campus today, I could not help but wonder, those who had the faith to found this college in 1917, what would they think tonight? And what would they think tonight? And I suspect what they would think was, well done. That what we did not even dare to imagine has come to pass. Since our founding nearly a quarter of a millennium ago, Phi Beta Kappa has been dedicated to recognizing outstanding students committed to the study of the arts and sciences. We celebrate inclusive excellence and champion freedom of thought, freedom of inquiry, and freedom of expression. And we hold intellectual curiosity in the highest regard. We are delighted to recognize and celebrate these hallmarks of your institution tonight. The mission of Providence College intertwines with that of Phi Beta Kappa as you stand firm in your devotion to academic excellence, but not for the sake of excellence alone. Your very motto, Veritas, commits you to seek the truth and to grow in virtue out of a call to service. You enter here to learn, you will leave to serve. This tradition ensures that your students have a transformative education in the liberal arts. These principles are fully consonant with the values that have sustained Phi Beta Kappa over the centuries. And I think it is fair to say they have never been more urgent and they have never been more compelling than they are today at this time, at our time. The Governing Council of Phi Beta Kappa, having carried out, as you heard, a rigorous process. Did, did you notice Dr. Branham wincing just slightly when she said that? A rigorous process that only feels easy in retrospect, doesn't it? Is assured that Providence College embraces and upholds the highest academic standards in an ongoing commitment to excellence in the teaching and learning of the liberal arts and sciences. It is thus with great pride that I announce that the Phi Beta Kappa Triennial Council voted on August 5th, 2021, that a charter be granted to members of the Phi Beta Kappa Society assembled here and that in accordance with the provisions of that charter, 
may be empowered to function in every respect as a chapter of the society. That is what brings us to this sacred space tonight. Part of our tradition includes a reading of the Charter. I am grateful to be accompanied by Dr. Peter Quimby, the president of the Phi Beta Kappa Society, the title that we give our board chair, our governing board, the Phi Beta Kappa Senate. Dr. Quimby is a graduate of Bowdoin College, magna cum laude, and not surprisingly, Phi Beta Kappa. And he holds a PhD in political science from the University of Wisconsin. After leadership roles at Wisconsin, Princeton, and Yale, he became head of school at the Governor's Academy in Massachusetts. Peter's leadership in the arts and sciences spans decades, as does his devotion to Phi Beta Kappa and its ideals. Dr. Quimby, will you please come forward to extend your congratulations to the Providence community? And you all listen carefully. He's going to quiz you on this afterwards. To read the chapter, charter, of the Gamma of Rhode Island chapter. Dr. Quimby. Thank you, Secretary Lawrence, and thanks to all of you for welcoming us so warmly um, to Providence. Uh, Secretary Lawrence, you mentioned that uh, how pleased everyone here should be that the Triennial Council did in fact meet, albeit virtually. Um, it struck me that I should be pleased as well because it was at that Triennial Council that I was elected president, and having been elected president that I then had the pleasure of announcing the outcome of the vote that resulted in the awarding of a chapter to uh, Providence College and to the celebration that we are all enjoying here tonight. Um, one of the great pleasures of serving as president of the Phi Beta Kappa Society is being present at moments like this when new chapters are installed and um, spending time with all of you today, with Dr. Branham and others, sharing even briefly in the learning that you all cherish as a community is sure to be a high point when I look back on my service to the society. Tonight I wanted to share with you just a little bit about why serving as president of the Phi Beta Kappa Society is such an honor and why I'm tremendously grateful to be able to serve the society and its mission. My father was profoundly dyslexic and never went to college, but education was always highly prized in our home. The path that led me from my home in rural central New York to being here to celebrate with you tonight is one that was paved by teachers and professors and mentors who encouraged me to broaden my perspectives, to challenge my assumptions, to acknowledge my privilege, and to, and to commit to furthering the values that have been so central to my own development as a student and as an educator. I often think that the vantage point that I have as the head of a secondary school helps me appreciate the values of the Phi Beta Kappa Society and by extension the work of its chapters even more dearly. I see every day the enormous potential that lies hidden within young people. People from across the country and around the world. Some of them have not yet been told how far they can reach, have not yet been given the opportunity to discover who they are and who they have the potential to become. Sometimes students find that inspiration at the high school level, but much, much more often, they discover it only when they get to college. And what better mechanism for helping them realize their hopes and dreams and aspirations than a course of study that is grounded in the liberal arts? The institutions sheltering our chapters in all of their rich diversity, large and small, public and private, faith-based and non-sectarian, are the standard bearers in this commitment. We are so pleased to add Providence College to the Phi Beta Kappa family as you share this belief and this vision with your entire academic community, but most especially with and for your students. As I look at the challenges facing our country today, it strikes me that many of the solutions can be found in the skills developed and cultivated through an arts and sciences education. The ability to think critically and solve problems, to access and evaluate information, 
to apply knowledge learned in one context to an entirely different situation. The ability and willingness to consider diverse arguments and to appreciate listening to diverse points of view. These are the skills that prepare our students not for specific jobs, but, pr but for productive, fulfilling, and meaningful careers, and just as importantly, that instill in them a lifelong love of learning. Recognizing this same com commitment present so abundantly here at Providence College, it is my pleasure to read to you the charter establishing your Phi Beta Kappa chapter. We understand that the charter will have its home in the main entrance of Phillips Memorial Library. I can't think of a more perfect place, as there it will serve as a visible reminder of your collective and firm commitment to the arts and sciences. I will read now the names of the charter members of the Providence College chapter. If you are present with us now, please stand as your name is called and remain standing through the reading of the charter. Sheila Adamus Leota, Richard Battistoni, Joan Branham, Elizabeth Bridgham, Leisha Carlson, Amy Issa Sembor, Lynn Curtis, Matthew Dowling, Bruce Graver, Matthew Guardino, Paul E. Heron, Eric Hirsch, Colin Jondrill, Colin King, John Lawless, Ian Levy, Stephen Long, Stephen Lynch, Kayla McBee, Susan McCarthy, Joanna Morris, Sean Mulcahy, Dara Mulderi, Sharon Ann Murphy, Father Mark Noel, Mark Pedretti, Brett Pellock, Robert Reeder, Thea Reofrancos, Christina Rodriguez, Melanie Sullivan, Arthur Urbano, Adam Villa, Trina Vateato, Adrian Chastain Weimer, and Laura Williams. The charter reads as follows. If you can count correctly all of the whereases, therefores, furthermores, and hereunto's students, I will shake your hand after you are inducted. If you can't count them all correctly, I will still shake your hand after you are inducted. It's a very low stakes exam. Whereas the liberal principles of our society should not be confined to any particular place, person, or description of persons, but should be extended to the wise and virtuous of whatever community. And whereas we, the members of Phi Beta Kappa, as a body dedicated from its very founding in the historic year 1776 at the College of William and Mary in Virginia to the ideal of excellence in scholarship in the liberal arts and sciences, are willing and desirous to propagate the society in praiseworthy institutions of higher learning. And, whereas, we are satisfied that you are inspired by an unquenchable desire that your institution be added to the notable company which enjoy the recognition of Phi Beta Kappa. And we have carefully determined that your institution is possessed of the character and standing which make it particularly worthy of admittance into association and friendship. Therefore, by virtue of a resolution duly adopted by our representatives in the 46th Triennial Council of the Phi Beta Kappa Society, we have decreed the establishment at this time of a chapter of Phi Beta Kappa at Providence College in the state of Rhode Island to be known as Gamma of Rhode Island. Furthermore, we have commanded that their issue under the seal of the society and the hands of the president and secretary, a charter in the name of Phi Beta Kappa. 
if you haven't been mesmerized by the whereases and, and hereto, hereunto's thus far, pay attention to the next paragraph, which is, through the creative use of colons and semicolons, one sentence. <laughs> Here goes. Accordingly, you and such others as you may hereafter elect and associate with yourselves in conformity to the law of Phi Beta Kappa, and your and their successors so elected and associated are hereby incorporated and established as a separate and coordinated branch of the society and are hereby granted all powers, privileges, and benefits thereunto appertaining in as full and ample measure as the members of the existing chapters enjoy, there being at the same time enjoined upon them and required of you in the organization and conduct of the chapter and as conditions upon which this charter is granted, strict compliance with the constitution and bylaws of the Phi Beta Kappa Society, with the acts of the council and senate, and with the chapter constitution herewith transmitted to you, and likewise a devoted effort always to protect the name and the key of Phi Beta Kappa from imitations and indignities to promote the purposes of the society, period. In testimony whereof the President and Secretary of the Phi Beta Kappa Society have hereunto set their hands and caused to be affixed its seal this 26th day of April in the year 2022. Secretary Lawrence. I, I think he should try to do that in one breath, don't you think? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe three years from now, Peter, we'll do that in one breath. Charter members, please remain standing. Members of the chapter being installed, I now ask you, having heard the words of the charter read, will you accept this charter and will undertake the responsibilities its acceptance entails? If you do, please signify by saying, we will. We will. I think we can do a little better than that. <laughs> if you do, please signify by saying, we will. We will. That's what I was looking for. Congratulations. You are now charter members of Providence College's Gamma Chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. Please accept the gratitude of the society for the time and the effort you have invested in making this moment possible. Your work will long be remembered on this campus. Shortly, the new inductees and the foundation members will sign the book that you have put your name in. But this is only the first volume. There will be volumes and volumes and volumes of that book that will follow because of what you have started and what you have accomplished today. You have the gratitude not only of the Phi Beta Kappa Society that stands today, but of the generations that will follow. Congratulations and please be seated. We understand that you have selected Dr. Paul Herron, Vice President, to represent the charter members for this portion of the ceremony. As I call Dr. Herron up, I will take a point of personal privilege to say that although I've done many inductions, this is the first time I've had a former student represent with us here. Dr. Herron, when he was a graduate student at Brandeis, was my teaching assistant and my co-teacher in my course in criminal punishment theory, otherwise known and Father, you will, you will understand what I'm about to say. Since I was president of the university, he created the illusion that I was teaching this seminar, <laughs> for which I will always be grateful. Dr. Heron, as you know, once in the lifetime of a chapter, the charter members are authorized to elect foundation members as you organize your chapter. Have such members been elected? They have, sir. Foundation members have shown a commitment to the study of the liberal arts through their scholarship and service to the college. I ask that our foundation members stand as their names are called and come forward to receive your certificate and Phi Beta Kappa key with your name inscribed and sign the registry of the Gamma Chapter of Rhode Island. Dr. Wanda Ingram. 
Wanda Ingram has been contributing to the study of the arts and sciences at Providence College since 1971, when she arrived in the first class of admitted women. She was one of just a few women of color in that group, and as a chemistry major, one of just two women students in the sciences. Dr. Ingram went on to obtain her doctorate in educational leadership from Johnson and Wales University, and then returned to PC, where she has been an essential member of the community for over three decades, serving as senior associate dean of undergraduate students, first year class dean, teaching in the School of Education, mentoring generations of students and faculty, and is currently co-chair of the Martin Luther King Jr. Convocation Committee. She has been on the Black Studies Advisory Committee for many years and helped build the Black Studies program, which is a crucial component of PC's liberal arts program. Congratulations, Dr. Ingram. Dr. Teresa A. Lavoy. Teresa Lavoy is a member of the Board of Trustees of Providence College and a strong supporter of the liberal arts and sciences. She graduated summa cum laude from PC with a degree in chemistry before earning a master's and PhD in chemistry at Princeton and a law degree from the University of Minnesota. Dr. Lavoy practiced law for many years at Fish and Richardson focusing her work at the intersection of law and science through patent law and intellectual property. She is now Senior Vice President at Treeline Biosciences. Dr. Lavoie established the Anna E. Lavoie Memorial Lecture Series at Providence College to encourage students to consider careers in the sciences by providing an opportunity to interact with distinguished scientists and other professionals. Congratulations, Dr. Lavoie. Dr. Ter Dr. Terza Silva Lima Neves. Terza Lima Neves is a scholar and educator of the liberal arts and sciences whose work focuses on international politics, global gender studies, and the modern African diaspora, particularly gender and the Cabo Verdean community. She graduated from Providence College with a bachelor's in political science and black studies before earning a master's and PhD from Clark Atlanta University in political science and international and African politics. Dr. Lima Neves is now associate professor of political science and chair of the Department of Social and Behavioral Sciences at John Johnson C. Smith University. She is the author of numerous chapters and articles and edited the book Cabo Verdean Women Writing, Remembrance, Resistance, and Revolution. Dr. Lima Neves was a recipient of the 2020 Martin Luther King Jr. Vision Award at PC and regularly gives back to the college through a yearly conference on Cabo Verdean women, speaking engagements, and other service. Congratulations, Dr. Lima Neves. <laughs> Vice President Anne Manchester Moloch. Anne Manchester Moloch has demonstrated a deep commitment to the liberal arts mission of Providence College for over four decades. She was a member of the first class of women to graduate from PC in 1975, earning a bachelor's in humanities, and then a master's of communication and journalism from Purdue University. Ms. Manchester Moloch was founding director of the college's first publication center, executive, executive director of college events, Assistant Vice President for the College Relations and Planning, Executive Assistant to Father Shandley and Father Sicard, Special Lecturer in PC's School of Continuing Education, Vice President for External Affairs, Marketing and Board Relations, and a member of the President's Senior Cabinet. Today, she is the first woman to serve as the Executive Vice President of Providence College and continues to strongly support our liberal arts mission. Congratulations, Ms. Manchester. Mr. John J. Partridge. J. 
Jack Partridge has been promoting the study of liberal arts at Providence College since first arriving on campus in the late 1950s. He graduated summa cum laude as a history major in 1961, was in the first class of honors students, and then went on to Harvard Law School. He is a decorated Army veteran, a pillar of the Rhode Island legal community, and the author of the Algae Temple Mystery Series. Mr. Partridge has served the college as secretary of the Alumni Association, member of the Board of Trustees, and vice chairman of the President's Council. He was awarded the Providence College Alumni Association Recognition Award for Public and Community Service and an honorary Doctor of Laws degree by the college. He was chairman of the Thompson Fund to support the Liberal Arts Honors Program and currently serves as the first chairman of the Liberal Arts Honors Leadership Council. Congratulations, Mr. Partridge. <laughs> Professor Emerita Jane Lunan Perel. Jane Lunan Perel embodies Providence College's commitment to the liberal arts and science as the first poet hired to teach creative writing by the Department of English in 1971. She's the author of numerous books, including Red, Red, Red Radio Heart, Prose Poems, The Sea Is Not Full, and Blowing Kisses to the Sharks. Her poetry has also appeared in many scholarly journals and publications. Professor Perel helped develop the courses that would evolve into the minor and major in creative writing in poetry and fiction, and was a founding director of the Women's and Gender Studies program. She retired in 2014 and then received an honorary Doctor of Fine Arts degree from Providence College, where her legacy will endure through her work, her greatly celebrated teaching, and the Jane Lunan Perel Poetry and Fiction Series, which brings distinguished writers to the college annually for readings and lively discussions. Congratulations, Professor Lunan Perel. Mr. Michael A. Ruane. Michael Ruane's longtime support for the liberal arts at Providence College can be seen across our beautiful campus. He graduated from PC in 1971 with a degree in economics before earning an MBA from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. He found great success in real estate development and has always given back to Providence College, serving on the Board Affairs Committee, the Development and Alumni Affairs Committee, as chair of the executive committee and as chair of the board of trustees. He was awarded an honorary doctorate in business administration from Providence College and the Veritas Medal for outstanding devotion to the college. Michael and his wife Elizabeth established the Michael A. Ruane Scholarship Fund, the Michael A. Ruane Distinguished Chair in Economics, and funded the Ruane Center for the Humanities, which is home to the, de the Development of Western Civilization Program, the Liberal Arts Honors Program, the English and History Departments, and has invigorated the study of liberal arts at the college. Congratulations, Mr. Ruane. <laughs> Father Brian J. Shanley. Although Father Shanley is not able to be with us this evening as he is fulfilling his new presidential duties at St. John's University, he will receive his key and his certificate of induction. Father Shanley was the longest serving president in Providence College history. He transformed the physical face of the campus, hired most of the current faculty, diversified the student body, strengthened the Catholic and Dominican mission, enhanced the athletics program, and raised the college's national profile. He graduated summa cum laude from Providence College with a degree in history, before entering St. Stephen Priory and the Dominican House of Studies. He then earned a PhD in philosophy from the University of Toronto and became a professor at the Catholic University of America, where he specialized in St. Thomas Aquinas, the philosophy of religion, medieval philosophy, and ethics. He served on the PC Board of Trustees before being named 12th president of Providence College in 2005. He was a champion for the liberal arts while, while president of the college, and he provided essential support during 
the Phi Beta Kappa application process. Congratulations, Father Shanley. And last but certainly not least is Father Kenneth R. Sicard. Father Sicard has been an indispensable member of the Providence College community for decades and has long supported our liberal arts mission. He holds a bachelor's in accounting and a master's in business administration from PC and a PhD in business administration from the Ohio State University. He holds a master of divinity and bachelor of sacred theology degree from the Dominican House of Studies. Father Sicard has served Providence College as Dean of Residence Life, Executive Vice President, Treasurer, President's Chief of Staff, and as a member of the President's Senior Cabinet. He oversaw the creation of three of the college's strategic plans, including PC200, which prioritizes goals in academic excellence, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and interdisciplinary studies. He met with the Phi Beta Kappa visitation team and helped convey PC's commitment to the standards of Phi Beta Kappa. Since taking office as the 13th president of Co Providence College, he has continued to strengthen this core feature of the college and support our liberal arts mission. Congratulations, Father Sicard. Foundation members, you have been elected by the charter members of this chapter to become foundation members of Phi Beta Kappa in its organization and subsequent operations, a singular honor accorded only once in the lifetime of each of our 293 chapters. Will you accept this foundation membership now offered and the responsibilities that it entails? If so, please signify by saying, we will. Now, you see, charter members, that's how it gets it done, okay? <laughs> On behalf of the officers of the Senate and of the entire Phi Beta Kappa Society, I am delighted to declare you members of Phi Beta Kappa and welcome you as members of the nation's most prestigious honor society. For nearly a quarter of a millennium, the society has been a fellowship of learners, and we are delighted to welcome you to it. Congratulations to all of you. We commend you on your many achievements and thank you for your future contributions to the life of this chapter and of the National Society. Now we now have just a little more business to take care of to have this chapter fully installed and ready to begin its operation. At the moment, the only members of the chapter are the charter members here present, those who are not present but therefore cannot take part in this meeting, which is what is about to happen and the foundation members who are full members of the chapter. The Phi Beta Kappa Senate provides a model constitution for the governance of chapters. I'm advised that the members of this chapter have adopted a chapter constitution and agree to conduct the business of the chapter according to its provisions. Will you so agree? Now remember, this is only the foundation members. This is only the foundation members and the charter members. If I catch anybody else voting, you know, we're not going to do voter fraud here. We take this very seriously. So if you do agree to be bound by this Constitution, please signify by saying, we will. we will. The Senate has also established model chapter bylaws for each chapter's consideration. I'm advised that you have seen that document, revised it slightly in accordance with the conditions on this campus. Those revisions have been accepted by the Committee and Chapters of the Phi Beta Kappa Society Senate and have adopted the resulting document to govern this chapter. I now ask if you, Charter and Foundation members, will agree to govern this chapter according to those bylaws. If you will, please signify by saying, we will. We will. I would now like to ask Sheila Liotto to come forward to represent the chapter's charter members. As she does, Sheila, let me say a word of personal thanks to you for what you have meant to this school and to the effort to obtain this chapter. I know you have worked long and hard to make this happen. We wish you Godspeed as you take the next step on your journey as provost of St. Anselm College. The bylaws call for the election of officers in accordance 
with elections that took place earlier this year on campus. Have you names to be placed in nomination for those positions? We do. I ask our nominees to stand as I read their names. Dr. Joan Branham, President. Dr. Paul Heron, Vice President. Amy Sembler, Secretary. Dr. Elizabeth Bridgham in absentia, historian. Dr. Dara Mulderry, treasurer. Secretary Lawrence, I move that this slate of nominees be accepted by acclamation. It has been moved that the slate be accepted by acclamation. Is there a second? It has been moved and seconded. Does any member wish to discuss the motion? Hearing none. We will proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the slate of nominees, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Abstentions. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The motion is adopted unanimously. Chapter officers, you have been elected by your peers to lead this chapter in the months ahead. This is a notable honor and also a considerable task. As this chapter's first elected officers, you will be responsible for establishing the permanent presence of Phi Beta Kappa on this campus, defining its mission in the community and upholding its reputation for excellence. You will be expected to communicate regularly with the National Office of the Society in Washington, D.C. to represent this chapter in the Society's governance and to keep a permanent and accurate record of your proceedings. It is the mission of Phi Beta Kappa for nearly a quarter of a millennium to stand for the principles of free expression, of free inquiry, of academic freedom, and of the importance and vitality of the liberal arts and sciences. You commit to lead this chapter in its public face on this campus and out into the community to represent these values. If you are willing to commit yourself to the carrying out of these responsibilities, I ask you to affirm that commitment in this sacred space by saying, we will. we will. You are to be congratulated. You have the gratitude of all members of the Phi Beta Kappa Society for the work that you are about to undertake. Thank you all, and God bless you all. You be seated. The chapter charter having been duly delivered, its provisions accepted, the chapter constitution and bylaws formally established, and the officers elected and confirmed, it is now my great honor and pleasant duty to proclaim that Gamma of Rhode Island has been formally installed. Gamma of Rhode Island now takes its place among the many distinguished chapters of the Phi Beta Kappa Society with authorization to induct new members of Phi Beta Kappa in accordance with the society's policies, to advocate on the society's behalf for the excellence in the liberal arts and sciences, and to serve as a force on the Providence campus and in the greater community for freedom of inquiry and expression, and to commence its operation as a chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. Today is a day for celebration and congratulations for Providence College, but also for the Phi Beta Kappa Society. We join our fortune to that of this great institution and look forward to our service of carrying forth from here the mission and values of the society. The mission of a liberal arts and sciences education for which both Providence College and the society so ardently advocates has never been more relevant and never been more compelling. Study of the arts and sciences offers depth and breadth, provides space for questions and answers, and allows, indeed, demands a diversity of thought. This prepares its students for meaningful, productive, and engaged lives, no matter their chosen profession. These are long-lasting virtues that we espouse together. And here today, Providence College links itself with this ancient and honorable academic honor society. You now join with chapters at 292 of the country's most respected colleges and universities. On those campuses every year, 
Our chapters elect about 20,000 of the top liberal arts and sciences students to membership, just under 1% of those who will graduate from American colleges and universities. Our membership is vast, and it includes a wide spectrum of accomplished individuals. 17 United States presidents, 42 Supreme Court justices, over 150 Nobel laureates, as well as leaders of major companies and small startups, researchers and teachers, scientists and poets, and hundreds of thousands more who put their liberal arts education to work every day for the betterment of the world around them. To the students who will be inducted shortly, and to your family members, I offer my warmest congratulations and wish you every success. As you leave this institution and advance through the various stages of your life, always embody what Phi Beta Kappa represents. Seek out a Phi Beta Kappa Alumni Association. Find us on social media. Know that we are here for you as you take your first steps on life's journey and those that will follow. At your actual induction ceremony that will take place in a few moments, you will learn that the three Greek letters Phi Beta Kappa come from the motto adopted on that founding night of December 5th, 1776. Philosophia Bio Kubernetes, life of learning is the guide or the pilot of our lives. May your love of learning know no bounds. Now I am happy to conclude the ceremony of installation with a passage from an early ritual. Let this chapter confer new distinction on the ancient and illustrious association of which it is now a member. May this star shine with unsurpassed brilliancy in that splendid constellation which has so poured a radiance over the literary character of our country. With these words, we close the ceremony of installation of the Gamma of Rhode Island chapter of Phi Beta Kappa. Again, our warmest and most sincere congratulations. God bless you all in your worthy endeavors and welcome to the Phi Beta Kappa family. members of Phi Beta Kappa, honored guests, we meet here this afternoon to receive into our society those who, having qualified for election, now wish to be admitted to its privileges and undertake its responsibilities. In a ceremony that goes back to the time of the founding of our nation, we will welcome them into an association with all those who have been members of Phi Beta Kappa in the past and into a lifelong relationship with the society today. President um, Quimby, Secretary Lawrence, President Sicard, Provost Reed, members of Phi Beta Kappa and friends, I have the honor to present the following persons who, agreeable to our invitation, here offered themselves for initiation. Student candidates for membership in course, please stand. According to Phi Beta Kappa documents dating from 19, uh, 1779, the president of Alpha Chapter greeted initiates as follows. This society was founded by a few friends. At first, it was confined to a small number of very worthy students. They planted the Sion from which has grown this tree that now buds forth before your eyes with blossoms of harmony and concord. It was engrafted on the stock of friendship in the soil of virtue enriched by literature. To cherish and keep it alive has been the constant care of those members who have succeeded. You are about to become one of those successors and it is our fondest hope that you in turn will come to cherish the society and will strive to perpetuate the spirit of this greeting. You may be seated for now. As is customary on this occasion, a Phi Beta Kappa historian offers an account of the society's history. Dr. Sharon Murphy.
As Secretary Lawrence mentioned, on December 5th, 1776, a group of young men who were then studying at the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia, met to create a secret society, at once intellectual and social in purpose. The president's greeting to new members in 1779 reads in part, here you are to indulge in matters of speculation, that freedom of inquiry that ever dispels the clouds of falsehood by the radiant sunshine of truth. In their clandestine meetings, the members seriously debated a host of questions, such as whether a wise state hath any interest nearer at heart than the education of the youth, or what the just cause of war might be. The establishment soon afterwards of chapters at Yale and Harvard ensured that the Phi Beta Kappa Society would survive the arrival of British General Cornwallis's troops at Williamsburg and the duration of the revolution. The first society, college society to bear a Greek letter name, Phi Beta Kappa introduced the essential characteristics of the Greek societies that followed it. An oath of secrecy, a badge, mottos in Greek and Latin, a code of laws, an elaborate form of initiation, a seal, and a handshake. The organization was created as a secret society so that its founders would have the freedom to discuss any topic they chose. Freedom of inquiry has been a hallmark of Phi Beta Kappa ever since. However, in the 1830s, when anti-Masonic agitation generated discussion about the Phi Beta Kappa Oath, Harvard dropped the requirement for absolute secrecy, an action that probably saved the society from further open criticism, as well as from rivalry with the social fraternities that made their appearance around that time. Chapters have been added gradually over time with great attention to merit. The number nationwide stood at 25 in 1883 when the National Council of the United Chapters of Phi Beta Kappa was created. At about the same time, in an era which secret, during which secret and exclusive societies were often bastions of discrimination, Phi Beta Kappa chose a different way. The first women and African Americans were invited to join Phi Beta Kappa in the 1870s and 1880s. Between 1887 and 1917, 64 new chapters were established, and by 1983, another 147 had been chartered. Today, Phi Beta Kappa has over 500,000 living members, elected over the years by, as of today, 293 chapters at colleges and universities across the country. More than 40 local alumni associations provide members an opportunity for a lifelong relationship with Phi Beta Kappa. Phi Beta Kappa takes pride in its origins. The Phi Beta Kappa key, which you can see illustrated on your program, reproduces the design created by its founders. On the front, it bears the Greek letters Phi Beta Kappa, the initials of the words philosophia bu gubernatatse, meaning love of learning is the guide of life. The three stars in the upper left-hand corner of this side symbolize the aims of the society, friendship, morality, and literature. A pointing hand in the lower right-hand corner stands for aspiration. On the reverse side are inscribed the letters S and P, which stand for the society's second motto, the Latin words Societas Philosophiae, meaning Society of Philosophy. Below them appears the date of the founding of the first chapter, December 5th, 1776. Students, when you receive your keys, you will see that your names have been inscribed onto them. 
Although Phi Beta Kappa is now an honor society, not a secret society, tradition has preserved two secret signs that we, will, we still share. When members meet, they greet each other by drawing the backs of their index and middle fingers of the right hand across their lips, affirming that their lips are sealed. I can honestly say I've never done that before. Um, they, fo <laughs> they follow this sign with a handshake where they hook those fingers and shake hands as uh, Secretary Lawrence pointed out to me. <laughs> Even Phi Beta, uh, but Phi Beta Kappa is much more than symbols and signs. As Charles Evans Hughes, the late Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and Phi Beta Kappa member eloquently stated, the peculiar interest of Phi Beta Kappa is in liberal education. Intensive, critical study of educational aims and methods has found nothing to take its place. It means the development by careful training of the capacity to appreciate what has been done and thought. The ability to make worthwhile appraisals of achievements, doctrines, theories, proposals. It is liberal because it emancipates. It signifies freedom from the tyranny of ignorance and, what is worse, the dominion of folly. Members of Phi Beta Kappa have turned aside from the easier paths and by their talent and fidelity have proved themselves to be worthy. It gives the fitting recognition of a special distinction. To our inductees, this is a memorable moment. Phi Beta Kappa honors the best and the brightest in the liberal arts and sciences. At Providence, we engage you in a mission of global citizenship and responsible leadership. The nexus between the values of Phi Beta Kappa and Providence College is embracing excellence as a guiding principle. Today, Celebrate your excellence and take it with you as you build your lives beyond Providence College. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. Will the student candidates for membership in course please rise? In accordance with the rules of this chapter and in consequence of our good opinion of your intellectual and moral character supported by your record of high attainment at this institution, you have been selected as worthy of becoming members of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Your names have been submitted to the scrutiny of the constitutional electors of the chapter and have met with their approval. You have been formally notified of your election and by your presence here, signify your desire to be enrolled as members of this ancient and honorable society. Therefore, I now inquire, do you solemnly promise that you will be true and faithful to the Phi Beta Kappa Society, uphold its standards, obey its laws, and seek to reflect credit upon your affiliation with this venerable fellowship of learners? Please signify this promise by stating, we do. Each of you has now affirmed your loyalty to the Phi Beta Kappa and pledged to uphold its standards. We welcome you into the ranks of membership. I invite Secretary, Secretary Simbor to the podium. As I invite each candidate for membership to come forward wearing your Phi Beta Kappa honor cords, also to be worn at the college's graduation ceremony. You will, be, you will be congratulated by President Branham, Secretary Lawrence, President Quimby. You will receive your Phi Beta Kappa key engraved with your name and marking the quest for wisdom. Accept the certificate of the Phi Beta Kappa induction and sign the registry of the Gamma Chapter of Rhode Island. Julia Abbott, majoring in environmental biology. Hope Allard, majoring in business economics.
Margot Beaupre, majoring in psychology. Lorenzo Battistoni, majoring in biochemistry. Olivia Bretzman, majoring in English, minoring in Spanish. Emily Brooks, majoring in English and psychology, minoring in Spanish and Italian. Fang Bui, majoring in computer science. Michaela Campbell, majoring in public and community service studies. Sofia Correo, majoring in political science and women and gender studies. Madison Cohen, majoring in global studies and so sociology. Madeline Crago, majoring in biology and minoring in French. Ricardo De Fonseca, majoring in business economics and management and minoring in neuroscience. Sydney Davis, majoring in biology. Rachel Denny, majoring in global studies, minoring in Spanish and sociology. Celine Dobler, majoring in political science, minoring in sociology and women and gender studies. Catherine Doner, <laughs> majoring in global studies and sociology and minoring in marketing. Catherine Donahue, majoring in biology and Spanish and minoring in Black Studies and Latin American Studies. Kelly Drogan, majoring in Psychology. Ailish Egan, majoring in History and Secondary Education and minoring in Spanish. Jacqueline Eli, Elia, majoring in History and Classics and minoring in Public Administration and Spanish. Emma Fink, majoring in biochemistry and computer science and minoring in business and innovation. Mariela Flores, majoring in English and creative writing. Jillian Forrester, majoring in global studies and history. Meredith Jandro, majoring in sociology and psychology. Maria Gentili, majoring in biology and secondary education and minoring in sociology. Megan Geoffrey, majoring in business economics and global studies. Exadia Gonzalez, majoring in biology with a minor in women's studies and history. Chad Hess, majoring in physics with a minor in Spanish. Megan Cutie, with a major in biology. Anna LaFortune, majoring in global studies and management with a minor in Spanish. Eliana Lopez, majoring in English and creative writing. Devin Luden, majoring in biology. Matthew Lucier, majoring in political science and Spanish with a minor in sociology. Grace Mafucci, majoring in music and Spanish. Megan Marshall, with a major in mathematics and minoring in Spanish. Mackenzie Maud with majors in mathematics and art history. Julia McCoy, majoring in English and political science and a minor in Latin American studies. Molly McGee, majoring in psychology with minors in economics and finance. 
Molly McGrath, majoring in Global Studies with a major in French, excuse me, a minor in French. Sorry, Molly. Christy McSweeney with majors in Mathematics and Computer Science. Cassandra Mirasolo with a major in Business Economics, minoring in French. Angela Mitsuma, majors in music and biology and a minor in mathematics. Cassidy Molinari with majors in psychology and Spanish and minors in French and business and innovation. Jonathan Montalvan with majors in computer science and Spanish. Jelitza Montesino with a major in political science. Clarice Mulvey, political science and history majors. Abigail O'Connell with majors in psychology and sociology and minoring in Spanish. Madison Palmieri, majoring in English and history. Morgan Perry with majors in French and management and a minor in Latin American studies. Luke Pryor, majors in history and secondary education. Gretchen Richardson, major in history, minoring in philosophy. John Rooney, majoring in political science. Olivia Schmidt, majoring in biochemistry and biology. Basundo Sepulveda, majoring in biology and pre-engineering with minors in philosophy and marketing. Grace Sherlong, majoring in economics and health policy management. Fouk Tran, majoring in computer science and finance with minors in Spanish and Latin American studies. And finally, Jaylene Vasquez, majoring in global studies and health policy and management with minors in French and business and innovation. Candidates for membership in course. By election of the chapter and by your assent to its pledge, the society's requirements for initiation are fully satisfied. I therefore, in the presence of these members of the society, declare you to be members of the Gamma chapter of Phi Beta Kappa in the state of Rhode Island and authorize you to wear its cords on a commencement day, its key as a badge, and to participate in its meetings. Congratulations, you are now lifetime members of the nation's most prestigious academic honor society in the liberal arts. Be active in its programs and the community alumni associations, support its endeavors and lofty goals, and be a working advocate for the liberal arts in our society. It is my pleasure to welcome you as members of the chapter. Congratulations.
It is now my extreme pleasure to welcome Father Kenneth Sicard, the president of Providence College, to offer some closing remarks. Thank you, Dean Branham. I appreciate the opportunity to participate in this momentous event in the life of Providence College. Inclusion as a foundational member is an honor that I will treasure forever. I'm both grateful and humbled. The establishment of a Providence College Phi Beta Kappa chapter is particularly meaningful because it gets to the very essence of what we are all about. It has been said that our mission is our motto, veritas, the truth. As a community of learners, we seek truth. We nurture intellectual curiosity by asking questions and probing for answers. We believe that there is truth in our academic pursuits, there is truth within us, and there is truth in God. In the liberal arts and sciences, we learn what is true, along with what is beautiful and meaningful. We practice the enduring habits of mind that serve us as people who never stop learning, and we gain the perspectives that help us lead good lives. These are the essential reasons that a Providence College education is both distinctive and remarkable. We have generations of alumni who prove the point, and this prestigious recognition by Phi Beta Kappa serves as much appreciated and well-earned verification of what we know about our shared experience at this institution. To the students who comprise the inaugural class, I offer heartfelt congratulations. You stand out among your peers for your human and academic pursuits, but also much more. You exemplify character and integrity among the ideals we value most highly here at Providence College. Phi Beta Kappa membership is a mark of distinction that will serve you well throughout your lives. It is a signal to all that you are a person of signature accomplishment with unlimited potential. Congratulations. In closing, I would like to thank all those who worked so hard to make this dream a reality. The work involved in gaining approval to establish a Phi Beta Kappa membership is significant, and it takes real commitment by a great many, and it would not happen without, above all, an outstanding faculty the community of scholars that makes possible the achievement of our highest aspirations. I am grateful to all who contributed to this effort, but wish to single out two colleagues. First is Dean Sheila Adamus Leota. While we will miss you when you leave to become Vice President of Academic Affairs at St. Anselm, the enduring presence of our Phi Beta Kappa membership will serve as a permanent reminder that you left Providence College better than you found it. Thank you. Dean Joan Branham, the chapter's first president, you have been a tireless advocate for Providence College and its students throughout this process, and we are grateful for your leadership in bringing us to this long-awaited day. May God bless each of you. Thank you. And I now invite Father Justin Bolger, our college chaplain, to offer a benediction. Thank you, Father Ken. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, creator of all things, source of light, and wisdom, we praise you and give you thanks for all of your gifts, and especially the gift of serving here 
at Providence College, inspire us in our work as a Catholic and Dominican liberal arts education by gracing us with wisdom to understand our lives, temperance to enjoy them, faith to believe you, hope to trust in you, and love to desire you. May we lead our students into freedom through the liberating power of truth, you who are the source of all truth. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, and may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The alma mater will be sung by senior Daniel Struther and accompanied by Gilbert Donahue, director of liturgical music. All please rise. Thank you, President Sicard, Father Bolger, Daniel Struther, and Gilbert Donahue. We have reached the conclusion of our ceremony this evening. In just a moment, the Phi Beta Kappa dignitaries, the charter members of the chapter, the foundation members, followed by our student inductees will recess. I ask that our guests please remain at your seats while we, we recess. We invite everyone to a festive reception celebrating this historic occasion in the Fiandella Great Room of the Ruane Center for the Humanities. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, students, and guests, I hereby declare this meeting adjourned. Again, our thanks and congratulations.